Welcome to the Killick Rugby Interviews. Today I'm joined by an individual who needs no introduction. After an illustrious playing career with Gloucester, amongst other clubs, and also representing England, he made the seamless transition from player to coach. It's great to have Mark Mapletoft here with us today. How did you make the transition from playing to becoming a successful coach? It was a deliberate one. Um, I wanted to take it slowly, didn't want to rush it. Um, thought the best pathway at the time was to go through the academy system. Um, and kind of things have moved on from there and learned so much along the way. Connor was in charge of the National Academy back then. He'd already been my boss at, at Irish, he was my boss there. And, and then of course when he took over at Quinns he asked me to, to come along and join the fold. Crazy question. but. Can you make an average player a great player? And is that the sort of thing that would give you a real buzz, transforming somebody's abilities? I, I th ultimately, it's, it's what you're in the business for, isn't it? To try and make the players as, as, as good as they can be. And even if you only contribute, well, in my opinion, 8% to them improving, then I feel that you're doing your job. And as an example, Mike Brown, has, has always, in my opinion, been a fantastic player and has elevated himself to first choice England fullback in the last two seasons. I'm pretty sure Mike isn't doing a huge amount different now to what he was doing four years ago when I came to the club. So if I've contributed a mere 5% to his improvement, then for me that's job done. I was reading some stats um, earlier in the week about the Aviva Premiership. You know, and it's been a fantastic start. You know, there's 67 tries scored against 40 odd last season. After round two, uh, attendances are up. Everything's great. And then you look at the Heineken Cup, and you just can't look beyond a French or Irish team winning it. Why is that? It is going to be difficult, and the reorganisation of the qualification in the Celtic League. Guinness Pro 12 I think is going to help because they're going to have to be more competitive every week in, as in the same way you are in the Premiership um, but some of these French squads are just enormous and their salary cap is much higher and their revenues are greater national sport you may argue in, in some areas of France so in, in many ways it's, it's not a level playing field but if you get them in a one-off game as Sarri's proved last year against Clermont who knows Presumably the, the changes to the salary cap here and the, and the squads here is going to help or not? We've got to make sure that we're not blocking the pathways of some of our best players because I've seen it happen before and I'm sure it will happen in the future. They just don't get the requisite amount of game time that they need to develop as a player. And then they have to go off and either be dual registered or they find their feet at another club and sometimes they miss the boat. And we just got to be careful of that. You know, Twelve half a million pound signings playing at the, at the 12 you know, premiership clubs would be great but that's 12 spots that may have been taken up by you know future England international yeah it's disruptive it's disruptive oh, it, can, it can be it's, it's yeah. great because you want the players how much of our young players learn off Nick Evans how much of our senior players learn off Nick Evans it's been incredible an unbelievable signing for the club but along the way he may have present, you know, prevented you know, young players like Rory Clegg getting the opportunities that, um, that, that Rory may have needed. And he, for whatever reason, he's fallen by the wayside and, and can't even get in the Newcastle side now. So that's disappointing. Um, and maybe it was meant to be, but you've just got to make sure you get that balance right. And, you know, otherwise you end up with a situation in France where their coaches, their national coaches are complaining there are too many foreign players. Well, we've seen that in the Premiership in football, so... Yeah, great, exciting word of caution, just let's, let's, not, let's not go overboard. So arguably your marquee signing of the summer was um, a very exciting young man called Marlon Yard. Um, does he need developing? Are you going to develop his, his skills? And is he going to be a success for England? I think he's already a success for England. I thought he was outstanding on the summer tour. Like any young player, he's got things he needs to work on. And when I sat down with him in the summer, he was hugely excited about joining Quinns and I just asked him a simple question of what's it going to take to, to make you world class so that when the World Cup comes around in 12 months, 15 months as it was, that people are talking about you in the same breath that they're talking about Julian Severe and Israel Folau, Ben Smith, 
because I don't think there's any reason why he can't ever elevate himself into that category. He's he's a finisher. He's got great predatory skills. He, he can work what we call the inside game in and around the breakdown, working off nine and ten. But he finishes out wide. He's powerful. Um, he's, you know, biting the tackle as well as carrying. I mean, he's he, he's decent in the air and. You want try scores. Try scores excite people, and he's got to you know, keep working on on certain aspects of his game. Um, he wouldn't have been pleased with some of his defensive work, I'm sure, out in New Zealand. But he's 21, so nobody's a finished article at that age. And but he's so keen to learn. I, I've rarely come across, and I've worked with a lot of young players who who are that keen to learn. Yeah, maybe it's a settling in period for McQuinns in terms of. He wants to make a good impression, but I've spoken to uh, the guys who worked with him through the Irish Academy and just said his hunger is second to none. Whether he does, only time will tell, but I think he's certainly got on home saw the opportunity to be you know, the kind of the go-to guy in the same way that I'm sure Surveyor and Smith and Falau will be um, with their respective sides. If you were the England attack coach, who would play in the back line and why? For me, there's two question marks in terms of who plays in the centre and who fills the other wing berth. I think that's up for grabs. I think Marlon's nailed on. Okay. Nailed on, I, I, my personal opinion. Uh, and I think Brownie's nailed on at fullback. And I think there's another wing slot up for grabs. I'm, Disappointed for, for him, really. Chris Ashton, I think, is, is an unbelievable club player. I think he's, he's, his work rate off the ball at club level is phenomenal and generally at international level has been excellent as well. Christian Wade, another really exciting player, along with Johnny May. But again, you probably put all three of them in the not sure defensively um, that they won't make errors. And if we're talking about going into a World Cup quarter, semi, or final, and they're fine margins as they generally are, then you're not going to want to give away an easy try in, in a wide channel. So, yeah, I, I think on probably a current form, it'd be really tough in the centre, but I'd, I'd probably, Luther and Manu, I think, pre present you with a really big physical challenge. Um, Owen picks himself at 10. He's, for me, he's head and shoulders above everybody at the minute, um, just with his goal kicking. But interesting to see George Ford, whose goal kicking has improved. He's changed his technique. I haven't seen him live, but from what I've seen on TV, He's changed his technique and he's kicking supremely well. So he will start to push. Um, Freddie started well at Leicester. And Danny's been doing some good stuff at, at Sale as well. So, But I would say, for me at the minute, Kerr, Farrell, Burrell, Tuolagi, Ashton, Yard and Brown. I think it's quite exciting, good blend. And yes. I, that's what I'd go with. You're the expert on no, that. No, far from the expert. <laughs>